Uh, so good morning again. Uh, the the purpose of my my study was to investigate the influence of the use of the singing voice, um, age and gender on children singing tonal achievement when singing a song with with text. So a song that I taught with melody and words and a song B that was a song that I, I started to teach with a neutral syllable that's only the melody with and I sang it with va in my in my classes. So we know that children's singing is affected by many factors including age, gender, the type of accompaniment, uh, home environment, modeling, motor coordination among others. There are a few of uh, beautiful articles of literature review on this. And I chose to focus on the use of the singing voice that it's a, a different construct from pitch accuracy. And I've used the measure developed and implemented by um, Joanne Rutalski, that it's, she's a teacher or she, she's retired now, a teacher at Penn State uh, University. And she developed this measure uh, to uh, measure the children's use of singing voice, that is the use of the vocal registers that she defined as being three, low, middle and high, although she, she knows that, that there, can be, there can be others. So she has this measure which has five categories and inconsistent behaviors between them. Um, so with the possible nine different scores and the maximum is, is five. So uh, the use of, of the singing voice is an important requisite for singing accuracy, but once more, it's a different, it's a different aspect of, of singing. So children who are able to use more vocal register, they have a tendency to sing a higher number of accurate pitches. So there are different constructs, pitch accuracy or singing accuracy and the use of vocal registers, but they are related. So the other, the other variable I've considered is this, that uh, it's singing with text and singing with a neutral syllable. And I'm being a teacher who I'm based in music learning theory. So singing with a neutral syllable is a, a very important aspect of my, my teaching. So I was really curious about this. And literature has shown us that there are inconsistent results concerning singing with text and a neutral syllable. Some researchers have found that children sing better with a neutral syllable, uh, that there are no differences, uh, that there are no significant differences, and sometimes we can have higher scores uh, with text when the youngest are, are singing. So the other variable I've considered is age, and yes, literature shows us that Accuracy improves with age, singing accuracy, and that this factor of maturation, uh, the influence it has on a better vocal performance, it can be due to improvements in memory capacities, motor and control skills. Concerning gender, there are also uh, contradictory results. Some, some studies have found that there are no significant differences between girls and boys when it comes to, to singing, to vote, to singing performance. Some studies have found that girls sing more accurately than boys. Uh, but others like, well, Christina is here. She has done a meta-analysis on singing variables and singing instruction was approximately as effective for boys as it was for girls, but it has a great effect on girls. So, but boys can be as successful as girls from the same age. That's what literature uh, tells us. And I was really curious in studying this variable also. So I had in my study 135 participants. They are quite, well, K4, I don't see, we don't see it very well, but K4, it's children around four years old. I had 22, 19, five years old, 27 first graders, 22 second graders, 23 third graders, and 22 fourth graders, and almost an equal, well, approximately an equal number of girls and boys. So what did I do? 
first at the beginning of my my uh, research i have collected data concerning the use of the singing voice and what i did was um, they came to a private room individually and the, the, the measure that Professor Rutowski has developed consists in echoing patterns. So once the first time or vice versa, they had to echo patterns that belong to a criterion song in a neutral syllable and then with text or vice versa. Then I started to sing a song with text and a different song with a neutral syllable ba. So they had the equal length. They had they were in the same tonality. They had the same the same range or same range. Uh, well, they were uh, well they were different, but not that different. Then this happened along five music classes. Then. After that, after the five music classes, I recorded the children individually singing song A and song B. Then I started a, another period of three music classes where I, song A, I continued to do it with text and song B, I added uh, words to the melody that they had previously uh, been taught in, in moment one. So at the end of this period of seven music classes, I've recorded them in individually again singing the patterns echoing the patterns for uh, that belong to the singing voice development measure uh, so i had for moment one i had three independent um, judges to evaluate these audio recordings I, I, we had a lot of them so i had different judges to evaluate the singing voice and different judges to evaluate the performance, the tonal achievement in song. So this tonal, I say tonal because the, the scales I've used, they had two dimensions. They had a tonal dimension and the rhythm dimension, but for this study, I only considered the tonal dimension. So this is, the, the rating scales were additive. So if they sang the first pitch accurately, they had one. If it wasn't accurate, they had zero. So the maximum uh, scores they could have for each song was five. Uh, so this is the a little bit of the, the, the descriptive statistics just to see that, well, the maximum they could have on the tonal scores of the songs was five. And they have, well, improved from moment one to moment two. And the maximum they could have in, in singing voice, in the use of the singing voice was, was five. Also, just like the, the songs. So this is, I, I've, I've run a multiple regression analysis entering those variables, the use of the singing voice with neutral syllable, use of singing voice, uh, with text, uh, gender, and grade level. So this first slide is just to show you that the four models, they were significant, and the variance explained uh, was about, well, around 50%, which I think is, well, it can be, it's quite good. So looking especially at moment one, I want to tell you that there is a common predictor for for the tonal achievement of both songs, and that is the use of the singing voice when singing with a neutral syllable. That is that children with higher scores in this pattern echoing and the use of the registers of their vocal registers, well, the higher the scores, the higher they will achieve in, in the tonal dimension of the, of the, of the songs. And for song A that was taught with text, so gender is uh, a predictor and this negative value means that boys will tend to have lower scores than girls. And in song B that was taught with text, gender is not a, 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 a predictor, but grade level is. So the, the older the children are, the higher they will score in, in songs. So in moment two, I just highlighted what I thought it was interesting. So for song A that was taught for, with text from the beginning, all the predictors, um, 
all of these variables were predictors, but the strongest would be when the, the use of the singing voice when singing with text, which is interesting because this was the song sang with text from, taught with text from the beginning. And in song two, that was taught with a neutral syllable, and then I added a text. So I just wanted to show you here that gender is the only variable that is not a predictor, so which is interesting. So uh, children, when, this, when looking at these, these results, children who demonstrate a higher use of their singing voice with a neutral syllable will tend to perform better when singing a song. So I believe that we should expand children's vocal registers first before we before we we have concerns with singing accuracy so first we expand children's vocal registers and to sing with a neutral syllable to do singing games or um how do warm-ups but especially using a neutral syllable it, it it could be important and another thing is that in fact to measure children's using voice singing use of singing voice and vocal accuracy separately is advisable because they're, they're, they are different constructs. So if we could have this singing accuracy, use of, of vocal registers, analyzing the rhythm performance in songs, so it, it can be useful to have more than one aspect, to have a, a photo of what children's singing uh, is at the time. So gender, is a significant predictor for song A, so uh, the song taught with text. So girls get higher scores than boys, but not for the song that was taught with neutral syllable from the beginning. So uh, perhaps to teach a song using a, a neutral syllable first and only, only teaching the melody might contribute to, to average boys and girls to diminish this gender difference as in, in literature, they say that, well, instruction, it, had, it has the same um, power, well, if I can say so, in girls and boys, um, and they could perform equally well if appropriate instruction is provided. And I believe that one of the factors might be to teach with a neutral syllable first. And then singing ability improves with age, which, um, well, the results from this study corroborate other studies' results that, in fact, they also show that it improves with age, but it's not so relevant for the song taught with text uh, in the first moment, perhaps because text is the, the um, well, songs with text, it, it's the most usual way of listening to a song or of teachers teaching a song but well this means that when we teach a song over time this will have a greater impact on older children so they they tend to have higher scores um, in songs uh, if they spend more time listening to them and singing them so thank you <laughs>